Hi, I'm Brenda Walton. I'm a licensed designer for Sizzix. My mother was an immigrant from New Zealand, and it was really interesting growing up with her because she had a different perspective on everything. Everything about American culture was new to her, and so it was kind of interesting looking, through the, looking at the world through her eyes. And she taught us to think differently and to not be like everybody else. And I think it really had a profound effect on all of us as children. My father is a jazz pianist, a really wonderful jazz pianist, and he would be playing jazz music in the background and the whole family would be sitting around the kitchen table making things, either for a holiday or just, just some fun project like mosaic or paper crafting or knitting or sewing. So that's kind of how it all started, just from childhood. When I graduated from high school, this is before I met my husband, I went to travel in New Zealand, my mother's homeland, for two years, and met a number of wonderful people there. And one of them noticed that I had nice handwriting. And I had never done calligraphy before this point, but he said, I'm gonna buy you a pen and a little booklet, little instructional booklet, and a bottle of ink. And the whole thing was $2. This is in the 70s. <laughs> and I said, great. And I had all the time in the world and just sat and wrote in my journal in italic calligraphy. And it was a great way to get started. And when I came back to the United States and uh, reunited with my husband, started taking calligraphy classes, and this is just an example of incredible serendipity because my aunt in New York sent me an article from the New York Times and the title of the article was, I stayed in a monastery and learned to write. And it was an English monastery. And so Doug and I looked into this opportunity and it was a series of classes that take place in monasteries and you learn all the classic hands of calligraphy and study illuminated manuscripts. And so we went over and I learned so much and got really excited about lettering. And when we came back to the United States, that was in 1979, my husband said, I think it's time that you quit your waitressing job and start doing calligraphy as, you know, a little business and just kind of find out if it was right for me. And it turned out it was wonderful. In the 1990s, my mother-in-law introduced me to scrapbooking. I'd never heard of such a thing and uh, really had fun with it and loved experimenting with colors and textures and different papers. And then uh, later, much later, um, just a few years ago actually, a friend recommended that I look into working with Sizzix. And so to segue into die cutting just opened up a whole new world for me. About 15 years ago, my husband and I built a studio that was attached to our home, which was really a wonderful thing because now we've got a large room where I can really spread out and see what I'm doing and have inspiration boards and all of the things that inspire me around me. And uh, so it's a wonderful workspace. And the way that I usually work is get up late because I am an artist, so that means I stay up late <laughs> and then I, I usually begin by sketching and um, just looking at my doodles that I've done and that's how my whole creative process begins with something small and non-committal and then I work out from there and it works really well for me. Just It's exciting to see ideas develop and I look forward to every day in the studio. I, I wake up excited. Traveling has really been an important influence on my work and my husband and I have traveled all over the world ever since the time that we got married, we've been traveling. I really encourage anyone who has the opportunity to travel just to get out of your normal everyday routine and experience someone else's perspective I think is really, really valuable and not stay in a bubble when you're traveling and have adventures. Another great source of inspiration for me is crafting with my crafty friends. And it's a group of six women, 
and we meet once or twice a year and we craft for four days straight with very little sleep thrown in there. Each one of us brings a project to this, this crafting retreat and um, we spend the four days uh, beginning and finishing all of these different crafts and we've painted, we've done jewelry soldering, um, we've done made little coin purses, we've done a lot of embroidery and uh, I just find it really really helpful to me as an artist and I would encourage anyone to start a group like this. What I'm most proud of in my life is our son and he's now 33 and he always has been and is now a most wonderful person and very helpful to us too. And so when my husband and I are working together, making decisions about our business, our son is involved as well and uh, just really helps us in every way. One of the best pieces of advice that I got for being a creative person is from my friend Melissa Neufeld, who is really my crafting mentor. She is an awesome creative person who thinks in a way that I've, I've just never observed this before. And she said to me, Brenda, be bold with your work because it's the only way that you can really learn. And I think what she means by that is taking chances and doing things differently and kind of going out on a limb and doing something that may be a little bit scary. It's just paper. She said, you can always do it over. <laughs> I think a lot of people put too much pressure on themselves to be perfect or make something in a certain way that is like the sample they saw. And it's, it's just so liberating to not care and just do something that expresses yourself and that you think your friend would love. My father used to play this beautiful song on the piano. It's one of the old songs and it's called Make Someone Happy. And the words go, make someone happy and you will be happy too. And that's what I think of when I'm doing my work, that it's just all about sharing the joy that you feel. And just think of it in that way, that it's a gift that you're giving and the recipient is really gonna be blown away.